So I'm going to repeat the same process as before. I'm going to select the left arm controller and then control select the left arm IK and I need to apply my constraints. So I go to my animation menu and looking for my point constraint first. So when I select it I can move my arm like so and while it's selected I'm going to control select the joint, oh, sorry shift select the joint. So here you can see my uh, source is white and my target is green meaning that's the direction of my connection and I'm going to hit the orientation constraint which should be still set up to go. So now I can manipulate the position of my hand rotation of my hand rather and also the position. Okay some more complicated setups you can do for this but this is just a very basic rig uh, tutorial and is enough to get you sort of primed and ready to go if you want to explore more complicated setups. So to do the left arm or sorry right arm I'll select the controller and then I'll go up to my outliner and control select the right arm IK and apply my point constraint. I'll hit F on the keyboard to zoom in a bit more. So selecting my controller and shift selecting my hand joint I will apply a orientation controller and then I should be able to rotate it as well as move its position. Sweet. So if I grab the hips now I will get some pretty interesting sort of things going on here. Okay, so I'm sort of don't want to control the character throughout by selecting the hips. Like so, I'm going to create a controller for that specifically as well. So what I'm going to do is go to go to curves and I'm going to create another bigger curve. Selecting the snap options, I snap it to my hip here. Okay, I'll just scale it a little bit. And that should be pretty much okay in this current configuration. I can go into, of course, my object mode, sub object mode, but F9 on a keyboard and just aesthetically, turn off my snap, aesthetically, do something like this. So, yeah, whatever. You could spend all day doing this. Um, F8. But this will become my hip control. And I'm going to freeze it out. So we'll zero it out like so. And this one should be relatively straightforward. However, I'm not going to bind it or constrain it directly to my hips because I'm going to create another IK controller for my spine. So I'm going to create an IK controller specifically to control the spine here. And the IK handle I'm going to look at doing is not the one we have been using, but it's the IK spline creation tool. And it's this guy here. Not this one, this is a standard IK, but this is the IK spline tool right here. So I'm going to select this, and this basically works in the same way as our creation for our IK. We select the first joint first, which will be my hips. And I'll select the next joint up here, which will be this one here, which links to my arms. And what we'll have now is an IK handle here. And essentially in a curve attached to it as well. So when you create an IK spline, it creates a curve and the IK handle. So the IK handle cell itself is not available to use because it's being controlled by a curve, which is here. Okay. So if you go into the object mode, sub-object mode of the curve, you can actually edit its positions of its um, control points to affect some very interesting deformation of your spine, which is kind of cool. So if I go to wireframe mode, we should better see our points. There you go. So you can see the spline there in white, and there are some points there to select, of course, for controlling the 
the spine. That's basically how it works. I'm going to get F8 and I'm going to go back to my smooth shade all. So I'm going to name my IK handle here for my spine. I'm just going to call it spine IK. And this is pretty much uh, spine IK curve. Let's get rid of the one on the end so we know what's going on. Now at the moment it's affected to a pivot point at zero zero world coordinates from the basic settings which means it sort of pivots like so. We sort of want it to pivot up here around the hips instead. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the pivot point. So in the move tool, which I've just selected by hitting W on the keyboard or selecting from up here on the left hand side, I'm going to turn on my snap. This time I'm going to do something that's called effect pivot only. Now this is done by holding down D on the keyboard. So this will allow me to move the pivot point to wherever I want to. So once I release it, you'll see now your pivot point has moved completely to where you have basically snapped it to. Let's turn off snap here. So this is more like where I want to have it. So I've got to control what's going on there. So the question is why did I set up this elaborate setup? Okay. First and foremost, of course, because you get this really neat way of controlling your spine. But also we get some other options under my IK spline. Spine. So if I select spine IK here from my outliner, let's go over to the channel box and have a look what I'm talking about. Now what I'm interested in is these ones called roll and twist. So if you highlight twist, I can middle mouse drag in the viewport and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So it twists this curve from the base up to its end. That gives a very nice spine twisty feel. Of course, I find it quite natural and it's a nice neat way of animating a series of bones. So essentially you could have more than three bones in your spine. You could have a six, seven or as many bones as you have your vertebrae. The roll also is interesting in that it rolls the whole thing around as well. We'll talk about these two attributes here in the channel box when we set up some more controllers here. But essentially what I'm going to do though is I'm going to parent, I'm not parent, I'm going to uh, do a uh, point constrain and a orient constraint with some options to my spine IK curve. So I'm going to select this helper and I'm going to control select my spine IK curve and I'm going to do a point constrain first. This should enable me to control it as you suspect, expect, but we can't rotate it yet. Now what I want to take a note of is the rotation axis here, which is the Y axis. So you can confirm this by rotating it. And you can see the changes over here in the Y axis here. That's because when I do another constraint, which is the orient constraint, so selecting the hip control and the spine IK curve, I'm going to go into my constraint mode here and hit my hotbox for orient constraint. This time I'm not going to constrain all axes. I'm going to constrain X and Z, but I'm not going to constrain Y. I'm going to hit apply and close. Now I can bend them forward, I can bend them left and right, but I can't rotate left uh, around, the, around the main axis here from left to right. So why is that? I could have just hooked it up. Well, I could do that, but actually what I want to take advantage of is, is this roll option here in the IK handle. So I want to hook this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my window. I'm going to generate it as I'm going to go to my connection editor. My relationship editors. Where are you, connection editor? And I generate it as connection editor here. This will allow me to hook some stuff up. So it allows you to connect particular attributes to another attribute. So nothing's loaded in here yet. And the key is that everything goes from left to right. So I connect things on the left hand side to things on the right hand side. So like it says here, outputs and inputs. And you can see here from and to. This is my general direction of how this editor works. 